All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a very long time since you've heard from us. I am sorry about that, but we are back. When I say we, I mean me and Charlie. Say hello to the people, Charlie. Hello, everyone on the internet. I have been in this video in these videos years ago, maybe years ago. It's been a while. I don't know. I don't it's remember. Been it's been a least, long time. At least like a year and a half to two years. But point is, you're back, and we're talking about ukulele now. This was going to be a let's look. A little bit past the point, no return on that. But apparently you've gotten far in the game. I don't know because I haven't played it. My Xbox is broken. I'm going to have to get that repaired. But it just so happened to break a couple days before this came out. So I'm a little bit peeved. You've played it, Charlie. I've only played the toy box. What do you think about the reviews it's been getting? Because it's not necessarily the greatest. Well, the reviews are definitely mixed. I think that has that might have a lot to do with the hype because it it has a uh, it has big shoes to fill when it comes to the Banjo Kazooie's legacy. So I mean, yeah, absolutely. Banjo Kazooie is probably one of my favorite games of all time. I think uh, you're with me on that one too. Oh yeah, Banjo Kazooie is one of my favorites. Banjo Kazooie and Tui. I'm of the camp. This is a whole different topic for another video. I'm of the I'm in the Banjo Kazooie camp. Uh, Tui, it was great, but you know the first one had that kind of magic. But that's besides the point. They're both fantastic games. What I've played in the toy box, and I'll just sum it up, and then I'll let you run with it because you've played a lot more. It feels like, and I'm watching this footage right now. It looks spectacular. The toy box was a little bit was much more plain compared to this. But and like this is awesome, walking underwater and and stuff like that. I I didn't even know this was part of the game. Uh, but the toy box definitely made me. It made me feel nostalgic, but. I don't know if it was in a good way. Like when I played it, it was good. It was fun. I enjoyed it and I wanted to play the main game, but I just couldn't help but shake the feeling that I really wish I was playing Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, I don't know if you get anything like that or well, is it different the main game? Well, yeah, I felt that way when the, when I was playing the toy box also, because there are a lot of similarities between this game and Banjo-Kazooie. It is after all, well, a spiritual, a spiritual successor, but I, what I really like in the final game is how much it expands on the Banjo Kazooie formula, and it really has its own element and its own and its own taste towards it. That even though it's a lot like Banjo Kazooie, it's also in its own way unique to Banjo Kazooie. In the in some aspects with the with the story as well as as well as the moves that the characters are capable of doing. Yeah, I mean the traversal is very very Banjo like, but. I haven't seen any of the other levels in the game, so you said, what, this is the third level you told me earlier? Uh, yes, this is the third level that I that I unlocked. I figured that to not show just the beginning of the game to get to dive a little more into it, this way I could have yeah, a, a more fair judgment of it. That's totally fine. I mean, I, as long as you're not spoiling the end of the game, then I think it's all fair game. But this level, it looks awesome. Like, graphically, it looks great. It looks a little bit more sprawling than, like, your typical Banjo level. Tui had some pretty huge levels, so maybe it's kind of, like, in that vein. But normally, when I think of Banjo level design, I think of a very contained space. And is it like that in this, or is it more open? Because this seems more open to me. I mean, what is, like, this is, we're looking at a shop or something? Well, yeah, yeah, the shop, it's it's a lot like a shop. It's a place where you buy moves. Like, instead of the musical notes in Banjo, there's quills in the game, and the quills act as a sort of currency to to buy to buy moves that your characters could do. So so unlike, uh, unlike let's say, Bottles, who in Banjo-Kazooie gives you the moves for free, or Jam Jars, who has, like, a requirement for notes, like, this guy, Trouser, he actually takes notes from you, at, like, when you buy the moves. Well, not notes. I mean uh, the quills. He actually takes the quills from you when you when you buy the moves. So yeah, it, so it's like a market pretty much. But it's still in the same vein, which is it still kind of fits. Like I can see how it would be – like if Banjo 3 was made, like I could see that being part of Banjo. Well, uh, yeah. Like – oh, yeah. I think that uh, – and until then, this would act, this would actually make a really good uh, Banjo Three, you know, to keep us ho to hold us over in, for the next Banjo game, which hopefully would come out at one day. Like I don't know when, because I mean, uh, I've been holding hope out for years. I mean, Nuts and Bolts was a, a great game, but it's not necessarily what I, what most people wanted from Banjo. I mean, I'm not going to say it's a bad game. It's not a bad game. No, it's, it's, not, it's just not a it's Banjo, not Banjo game. Three. Like it doesn't feel yeah. like a Banjo game. Yeah, exactly. Um, this game, though, like I haven't I haven't played it. I told you how I felt with the to the toy box, but 
I've seen scores like two out of tens and, and, and you know, four or five out of tens and everything like that. And it just doesn't seem like that kind of game. I'm not sure what people like, expected out of it, uh, but two out of ten can't be right. Like uh, I, I absolutely don't think that two out of ten is right. Like it's people not really giving the game a chance because th- this game is, is really well developed. It still has like its issues with with like a, a few bugs like uh, every now and then, but nothing, uh, but nothing like to have, to truly ruin the game- gameplay. But uh, but really, there's there was just a lot of effort put put into this game. And it's uh, and it, it is like the same people who made the banjo games, so yeah, a lot of the big names and everything like that. So you really can't go wrong, especially with the mu. The music sounds great in this level, at least, and you know Grant Kirkhope, David Wise, and stuff like that. You kind of expect it. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I'm excited to play it. Whenever Xbox decides to uh, send me my, actually, when they decided to repair my Xbox in the first place, I'd love to play it. But until then, I only have videos to rely on. So I'm gonna need to vicariously live through you. But this game looks way better than most people give it credit for. But you know, I think it's one of the situations where the critics are are being, no pun intended, critical. But the the fans seem to be kind of pleased about it. At least that's just what it seems like from my perspective. Well, yeah, there's like there there always has been like a division between the critics and the fans when it comes to reviewers. Like, like uh, there's there are st- there's shall we say a stereotype about uh, dishonest game reviews, uh, which you know it. Well, which is destined to happen like from time to time because you know people are people at the end of the day. So uh, not yeah, all... it could. Uh, like I was just gonna say, it could be a fact. Maybe like you said earlier that people expected the second coming of the 3D platformer, and what they got was a, a really good game instead, like just a simple basic game. I don't know if I expected this to reinvent the wheel, but at the very least, I hope that this game can at least just bring on a new renaissance. I mean, we've seen like 2D platformers become huge in the past few years in the indie scene alone. So maybe this will do the same for 3D platformers. Who knows? You think this could possibly like rejuvenate something here? Maybe maybe Microsoft will say, you know what? This game this game did pretty well. Let's do Banjo 3. Why not? Well, that's uh, getting our hopes high like, like, like a little bit too much. But I... But really, it, to me, this game just shows that uh, that the platforming genre is still relevant. Like it, it's still like an an, an enjoyable experience. Like it, like I didn't get to the to the third level because I did not from not enjoying the game. I had to enjoy the game to get uh, far enough to overcome the puzzles, overcome the challenges, and eventually find my way to the third level. Like and I'm yeah, at, and... I'm currently farther than the third level right now. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a really fun game. Like something I would recommend playing. Like it it it, it does expand. Like I said before, it does expand a lot on the on what on the banjo thing. Like you probably know this that uh, there's a there's a there's a power bar. I I always call it an energy bar, but it's a power bar. That so some moves that you do actually ends up costing uh, like energy. So you can't so certain moves you can't use infinitely, and let. Like you have a power bar and a health bar. Like your health bar does not regenerate, but your power bar does. And the and also the pe- the power ups. Like when it comes to the you get the the power ups in the game. Well, not necessarily power, more like the health system to replace the honeycombs in banjo. There's butterflies it in the game because uh, I I believe Yuka is a, a chameleon. So uh, yeah. So you you could either eat a butterfly to restore your health, or you could collect the butterfly and restore your energy, which is a pretty interesting idea to to have to add like that extra degree of uh, the extra degree of choice to the game, whether you want more, whether you want more energy or you want more life, like in the instance. Yeah, and I mean that's something that I'm I'm like gathering that the butterflies are used for health, but that's something I didn't even get from this thing. So. It just seems like one of those things you got to play the game to really get a grasp of, but that that's that's a pretty cool spin on it. I, I like I like to hear that there's something different done instead of just being like a an empty shell of a knockoff because that's what the toy box was. But this looks very fun to play. Like I totally want to try this out. So I mean, I think we've said our piece. You think uh, you got anything else to say real quick before we wrap this up? I feel that uh, I feel that. Uh... Even though the game has got mixed reviews, like personally, I re- I really like the game. I say that you should definitely give this game a chance, because because quite frankly, like uh, it's 
it's a good game. Like it's it's gotten like a lot of it's gotten a lot of following simply because it it is a Banjo Kazooie spiritual successor, and there's a lot of hate coming from the reviewers because it's a Banjo Kazooie spiritual successor. So so ultimately, I feel that that uh, get, at least give it a try. Like uh, like try like try the play for a level or two before you before you form a judgment. Like based on it, because it, there's a lot of hype behind the game, and at and at the end of the day, like uh, if you if it gets hyped up too much, then it's then it's not going to be as as fun when you're playing it if it if it can't live up to an impossibly high hype. That makes sense to me. Everything you said makes sense. I have not played the game, but your recommendation is good enough because I know you're very hard to please. And it's it's uh it's from the guys who did Banjo Kazooie. You can't really get a bad game out of that. So I say give it a shot. It's not even full price. It's like what thirty bucks. Yeah. I think you'll be safe by spending thirty bucks on it. Um, three D platformers are on the rise. I could feel it coming back, and it warms my N sixty four love and heart. So with that being said, from all of us here, at Crunch Moo, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned. We got more coming. Bye.